we're doing a little bit of everything tonight. So uh, there's lots of research going on in the state and we're uh, teaming up with lots of different partners to kind of knock out a lot of projects at the same time. Uh, this is a really, really significant cave. So the bats that are our target species tonight for our project are gray bats. They're an endangered species. Right now, um, the gray bats are coming out of hibernation. Um, a lot of them are migrating, and some of them have probably settled down into this cave and are using it as a maternity con. You know, bats are challenging to study. Uh, they're small, they fly at night, they're nocturnal, and they really don't like humans in their roosts. And if we were to go into this cave and be doing a lot of research and work, it would disturb them and they would leave this roost and go somewhere else. So we use more passive method. And tonight we're using a harp trap, and it's a really simple design of really two columns of fishing line, just monofilament fishing line. And we set it off to the side so it's not in the main flyway of these bats as they're coming out. And we just catch some of the bats, you know, a low number of the, of the overall, you know, gross emergence of the bats tonight coming out of the entrance. And it's enough for us to do a little bit of research on and to study without having a large impact. And the, the colony as a whole won't even know we were here. So this one actually has a little bit of the alopecia. So the skin looks really scaly and flaky. We have uh, Ash Cable, a uh, PhD student at the University of Tennessee, who's doing some uh, swabbing. So I will take samples from this bat. We're looking at the presence of alopecia, which is um, fur loss on bats. And um, we're trying to investigate over the summer um, any patterns of seasonality or potential causes of alopecia. We're looking for some of the main things that could cause it, like parasitic mites. Uh, we're taking skin swabs um, to culture for fungal and bacteria growth. Also taking fur samples to culture and trying to see if we notice anything that could be causing it. It's an investigation into how big of a problem it is, and also um, it sets a baseline for, for future studies. In the summer, we can't go in and count the bats. If you go in to a gray bat cave uh, in the summer and there are a lot of pups on the wall, sometimes they can fall off the wall. And if they're unable to fly, the mothers may be unable to put them back on the wall so they'll just die. So we, we don't go into summer in gray bat caves for that reason. The main thing is, is I want a, a cold background. So I want to get the, the cold rocks and then the hot bats will contrast flying over the rocks. I am. Uh, taking a thermal video of the bats as they emerge. And there's a new software package that's been in development for a couple years that we're gonna start trying out that'll basically allow us to count the number of bats coming out of the cave. This is a gray bat. It is a male. Well, there's so many things we don't know about bats. The Nature Conservancy, along with TWRA, they're doing a MODIS project where they're putting radio transmitters on bats. MODIS is just a, a way of getting additional information about these bats when they're flying. And that's our biggest question mark, is what types of habitat are these bats using when they're migrating, when they're foraging? Um, and we need to sort of understand that so we can better conserve those landscapes moving forward. For an endangered species that has, is recovering and, and doing better, um, and hopefully we're moving them towards being removed from the endangered species list someday. We really need that information of the shoulder seasons. We need that full life cycle information so we can do the conservation that we need to do to get them downgraded or removed from the endangered species list.